Operation Blue Star in June 1984 marked a watershed not just in the history of Punjab, but also in contemporary Indian history. No other event has ever had such a major impact as the army action in the Harimandar Sahib at Amritsar. Its fallout was unimaginable. The then Indian Prime Minister Indira Gandhi was killed by her Sikh bodyguards at her official residence in New Delhi. The then Army Chief General A.S. Vedya was killed by two Sikh youth in Pune. The Hindus and Sikhs who were believed to have an intrinsic bonding were communally polarized. The Sikh community was outraged and its psyche bruised. A bruise which may have diminished but which has not gone away. In fact, it has spilled over to the next generation. While at home in Punjab, things have limped back to normal. Six outside India continue to live in a time warp of 1984. Whenever I've traveled abroad, I've faced persistent questions from the Sikhs about the operation, which is Operation Blue Star. Strangely, some of these queries have bordered on myths and half-truths, which can only harm the bruised psyche further. It is quite clear that in spite of all the books and accounts which have been written on the operation by eyewitnesses and those who were a part of it, the full dimension of this defining moment of contemporary history has not been captured. What is the truth of Operation Blue Star? During the next few episodes, with the benefit of hindsight, I will try and address the doubts about the operation on the basis of detailed interviews with stakeholders and eyewitnesses, besides a simulation of facts by delving into some official records. Journalists, as you know, are mere mortals. So I and my team at Day and Night News make no claims to this being the last word on the army action in the Golden Temple complex. It is only a sincere attempt to, to tell you the untold story of Operation Blue Star. The atmosphere in Punjab was one of restlessness, anger and extreme tension in the months ahead of Operation Blue Star. The state had been under President's rule since 10th October 1983 after the centre dismissed the three-year-old Congress government led by Chief Minister Darbara Singh. The political rivalry between the brusque Darbara Singh and the crafty Gyanis Zell Singh was legendary. Gyanis Zell Singh had been the Chief Minister of Punjab for five years from 72 to 77 and considered Punjab his pocket borough. Drafted in the Union Cabinet as Home Minister by the then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi, Gyani Zell Singh was serving his second year as the President of India when Darbara Singh was removed. Yet his heart and mind intrinsically remained in Punjab. The former Punjab Chief Secretary K.D. Vasudev recalled how Gyani Zell Singh as Home Minister had once described Singhs in Punjab. The situation, in his view, resembled the helter-skelter strewing of unstuck pages of a book. Punjab ch kitab da varka varka khil riya hoya hai. The restlessness in Punjab, which emanated from the discord between the mainstream Sikhs and the Nirankaris, worsened over a litany of religious and political demands presented very forcefully by the Akali Dal. A respected Akali leader, Sant Harchan Singh Longowal, had successfully spearheaded the protest campaign for 22 months from August 1982 with the help of his compatriots, which included Prakash Singh Badal, the present Chief Minister of Punjab, and the then Shiromani Gurdwara Prabandak Committee President, Jathidar Gurcharan Singh Tora. However, as the centre dithered over the Akali demands, the grip of the moderate Sikh leadership waned. By January of 1984, the legend of Sant Jarnail Singh Bhindranwale had attained a peak. Sant Bhindranwale was a rustic religious preacher who headed the Damdamitak Sal at Chonk Mehta in the Amritsar district. 
patronized initially by the Congress, he had spun out of their control and gradually usurped the Akali leadership. Armed to the teeth with Kleshnikovs and other weapons, he moved into the Golden Temple complex with his supporters. The Akali the leadership as well as the SGPC became completely subservient to the activities of his hardline group. Their power literally flew from the barrel of the gun, which finally exploded in the face of the Akal Takht in the Golden Temple complex. New Delhi was a hate destination for the armed hardliners as well as the unarmed moderates. In the capital of India, it was primarily Mrs. Indira Gandhi, who in consultation with a small coterie of advisors, was taking out her sworn enemies in the Punjab and examining political and military maneuvers to gain an upper hand on the conflict. She took the final call to send the army to storm the Golden Temple complex and free it from the control of Sant Bhindranwale and his armed supporters. She held quiet consultations through her advisors on sending the army into the Golden Temple complex. Veteran journalist, author and diplomat Kuldeep Nair says she asked for his views through HKL Bhagat and he strictly advised her against this option. I thought it was about 3-4 Bhagat the information minister. Oh, the phone I came to I said, come on. I said, Mr. Gandhi has paid me. I said, I know that you are not here. But the government said, go inside or not. I didn't understand it. I said, what do you mean? 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 I said, I don't want to do it. 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 یہ دیکھ کوئی اور طریقے لبو پر یہ نہ کرنا میں کہا ہے دیکھو سکھان دا اے ویٹیکن ہے جس طرح وہ کرسچنان دا ویٹیکن اور روم میں چاہیے نا اسے طرح کہ سکھ معاف نہیں کر دی کرنے گے میں کہا سکھ کی پنجابی تو انہوں کو معاف نہیں کرے گا اسی سارے جن نے ہاں یہ گولڈن ٹیمپل دے نالی پیدا ہوا ہیں دیں سب جو شرط آتا ساڑیا تے وہ چلا گیا پھر وہ دے بعد پر پھر پھر بھی انہوں نے کر لیا ان فیکٹ میسیز گان appeared to be wearing away from the option to send the army into the Golden Temple complex. Former chairman of Minority Commission and ex-MP Talochan Singh says that she had assured President Zell Singh that she would not storm the Golden Temple. This is 100% correct that he was kept in dark. He was not going to be able to take care of him. ایون جڑا اٹیک ہے وہ بھی میں نو دسیا گردیب سنگھ ڈیپٹی کمیشنر نے امر سرتوں تو میں گینجی نو دسیا کہ آرمی اتھے پہنچ گئی تو باہر کہہ رہا پہ گیا تو ڈی سی چھٹی جا رہے سو وہ کہنے کے میں ہو سکتا ہے صلاح بالکل نہیں ہوئی ایکچولی یہ بھی تک کہا گیا لوکا نو کہ انہوں پتہ بھی نہیں لگے ایون دی آفیس آر دوار انوال دی ور ٹول کیپ اٹ سیکرٹ فرام ہے دی سیچویشن ان پنجاب ان اپریل می was extremely uncertain and swinging like a pendulum between hope and despair. There was speculation about whether the center would send security forces to storm the Golden Temple complex. There were arguments in favor of as well as against that option. Blue Star to Pella, when the action was happening, so Indra Ji had asked all the Sikh leaders. He didn't ask what to do, he didn't ask what to do. رائے لے اسی گی کہ اگر اسی طرح جس طرح اتنکبادیاں نے ارمندر صاحب و کال تخت گروہ کی جڑے سراہ سے ہی جا جڑا لنگر سے سارے تے قبضہ کیتا ہویا پنڈرہ والے آن دی جتھے بندی نے تے یہ مشکل ہے انہوں نے تو کڑھنا بڑا مشکل ہے فوج استعمال کرنے پہو گیا سارے نے اپنی اپنی رائے دیتی گیانی جی نے دروارہ سنگھ نے سردار سوارن سنگھ جی نے ایوریون انکلوڈنگ دی میڈیا was curious to know the answer. Janal Singh Bhindranwale, who was mostly referred to as Sant Bhindranwale, had come to epitomize the Sikh struggle which had been started by the Shromni Akali Dal in August 1982. Since then, the Akali faces of the struggle, Sant Harchan Singh Longowal, Prakash Singh Badal, Jatidhar Gurjan Singh Tora, and Surjit Singh Barnala had been totally eclipsed. As the Sikh face of the struggle, 
Sant Bhindran Wale held almost every evening a congregation of hundreds and thousands of supporters, devotees and other people at the Manji Sahib in the Golden Temple complex. He sympathized with those Sikhs who were alleged to have been harassed or tortured by the police. He openly named the police officers who were allegedly doing so. He would talk about discrimination and spew venom at the center. Pandasare kare jammi bibi, jantariya laike vota, Hindustan di bani prime minister Indra Gandhi, oye kite karman saar 1977 vich, ono ek den di saja jaan do den di saja mili, te haar jay vich gai, oye sahajogi paande hona ne, jahaar odalya ros majara karna vaste, te khalsa ji, onna nu gadiyan mili gaan, kursiyan mili gaan sahimbali te. Sant Bhindranwale's speeches had a mesmerizing effect on the young Sikhs, many of whom later offered themselves for seva to him. Many were inducted into the cadres after a thorough scrutiny. This included some students still in college or just out of it. Even some who were involved in criminal activities of some sort joined in or pretended to join him. There were some deserters from the police and the paramilitary forces and some even from the army who joined his ranks. One such person was Anok Singh alias Amarpal Singh of Uboke village in Amritsar. He was arrested on the morning of June 6, 1984 while trying to escape from behind the Akal Takhat area and spilled a lot of beans to the security forces about what had been going on inside the Golden Temple complex that night. He admitted to his interrogators that he had been convicted for the murder of his village Sarpanch about seven years before 1984. He further told them that after his release, when he had tried to join the Sant, he was made to pass a confirmatory test for loyalty, conducted by the then General Secretary of the All India Sikh Students Federation, Harminder Singh Sandhu, by placing a piece of burning charcoal on his palms. But inarguably, the most prized catch for the Bhindranwale camp was retired Major General Shah Beg Singh, one of the heroes of the 1971 Indo-Pak war that led to the creation of Bangladesh. He was then a brigadier. Shah Beg Singh later rose to the rank of Major General but was dismissed from the army without court-martial a day before he was to retire for committing financial irregularities which he maintained were cooked up. He belonged to Khyala Nand Singh Wala village in Amritsar and traced his lineage to the great Sikh warrior Bhai Mehtab Singh Bhangu, who along with Bhai Sukha Singh slew the notorious Masarangar in 1740 and thus avenged the desecration of the Golden Temple. Shah Beg Singh had clearly felt wronged and met various Akali Dal leaders to plead his case. However, when none of them paid much attention to him, he was advised to meet Sant Janel Singh Bhindranwale. Shah Beg Singh met Sant Bhindranwale a couple of times and was impressed. According to Shah Beg Singh's younger brother, Bian Singh, who is a farmer in Punjab and UP's Tarai region, Shah Beg Singh had gifted the Sant with his personal weapon. It is perhaps this weapon that the Sant carried on him till he was killed during Operation Blue Star. Bian Singh explains the reasons for his brother joining Bhindranwale. He was a very good guy, UP's chief minister. Then he was very close to him, then he was very close to him, then he was very close to him, and then he was very close to him. Then he was very close to him. Then he was very close to him, 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 then he was very close to him. Then he was very close to him. अमर सर आन के मिले ने अपने लोंगोवाल में अच्छा लोंगोवाल दा भी कोई देखा दम तो मैं नहीं का उन्हें दिन थोड़ा मोर्चे मार्चे दिन करना चल दिए थी के कपूरी मोर्चा ला सेकंड फिर उन्होंने आखिर उन्होंने एक आदमी राजबीर सिंह अमेरिका तो कोई आया है अच्छा तो उन्हें फिर आखिर ये इधर इधर वो जैसे � फिर उन्होंने संतानों को पेट की था, बंद वो दे वेसी का बिल्कुल पैक, शनिगलता बक्सा बक्सा बनाया है, वो दे वेचोनु वो दो मोगम सिंह भी लगे हैं। मेरा क्या लगा कीर्ता करो ना ऐसे रखे हैं। 
ਇਹ ਜਿਆਦਾ ਮੋਹਕਮ ਸਿੰਘ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਹੋਣਾ ਮੈਂ ਫਿਰ ਜਿਆਦਾ ਆਉਂਦਾ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਇਹ ਤੇ ਪਰਿਵਾਰ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਹੋਈ ਉਹ ਦਾ ਬਾਰੇ ਪਤਾ ਸੀਗਾ no one has any doubt about the intense commitment shabek singh had to his country retired brigadier onkar singh guraya recalls how shabek singh during the 1971 war in the then east pakistan had masterminded the training of mukti bahini the guerrilla liberation force of local bengali regulars and civilians that fought against the pakistani armed forces during this campaign he had even lived under a pseudonym big ali shabek singh's transformation from a brilliant military commander and a loyal and decorated indian army soldier to a renegade is reason enough for deep introspection for the army shabek singh along with his wife had moved into the golden temple complex around march 1984 and was the chief architect of the build up of the morchas inside his wife it appears had left the harmandir sahib only on 3rd june mera ladka meri message mata ji bhabhi ji ye sare ikatthe hi mera ladka wo mere ka chote dastar bandhi ho di mere ki 5 din pehla acha to wo din ye kal tak saal tak ikatthe ne tora wagera sare longa wala wagera te fir postpone ho gaya ke main time hai nahi paaj kinde time hai nahi baad ch banawange te ud magro fir morcha bandhi shuru ho chuki hi mata ji nu pata hi kehdi tarikh di gal hai ਇਹ ਤੇ ਮਹੀਨਾ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਡੇਢ ਮਹੀਨਾ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਹੋ ਚੁੱਕਾ ਹੈ ਜਦੋਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਹਲਕਾ ਕਾ ਫਾਇਰਿੰਗ ਹੋਈ ਹੈ ਉਹਨੇ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਹੋ ਚੁੱਕਾ ਹੈ ਕੰਮ ਮੋਰਚੇ ਬੰਦੀ ਦਾ ਤੇ ਤੇ ਇਹ ਸਾਰੇ ਪਰਿਵਾਰ ਇਹ ਬਲੂ ਸਟਾਰ ਤੋਂ ਇਹ 3 ਤਰੀਕ ਨੂੰ ਕੋਈ ਆਪਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਹੋਣ ਤੋਂ ਕੋਈ 5-7 ਮਿੰਟ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਆਖੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਜਾਓ ਉਹ ਇਹ ਆਉਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਕਾਲ ਤੱਕ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਦੇ ਚੌਕੀ ਆਉਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਗੁਰੂ ਹਰਗੋਬਿੰਦ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਦੇ ਬਰਾੜੀ ਗੁਰਦੁਆਰੇ ਅੱਛਾ 5 ਵਜੇ ਚੱਲਦੀ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਉੱਥੇ ਪਹੁੰਚਦੀ ਹੈ ਫਿਰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਆਖੇ ਸ਼ਵੇਕ ਤੂੰ ਆਏਗਾ ਉਹਨੇ ਆਖੇ ਮਾਦਾ ਜੀ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਚੱਲੋ ਪਾਬੀ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਸ਼ਾਨ ਕਰਨੇ ਉਹਨੇ ਆਖਿਆ ਨਹੀਂ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਚਲੋ ਬਾਅਦ ਹੀ ਸ਼ਾਨ ਕਰ ਲਾਂਗੇ ਤੇ ਮੈਂ ਸ਼ਾਮ ਨੂੰ ਹੋ ਸਕੇ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਕੋਲ ਪਹੁੰਚੂਗਾ ਇਹ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਆਖਿਆ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਨਿਕਲ ਜਾਓ ਬਸ ਇਹੀ ਲਾਸਟ ਨਿਕਲਿਆ ਫਿਰ ਫਾਇਰਿੰਗ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਹੋ ਗਈ ਹੈ ਥਿੰਕਸ ਹੈਡ ਰੀਅਲੀ ਹਾਟਡ ਅਪ ਇਨ ਦੀ ਮੰਥਸ ਲੀਡਿੰਗ ਅਪ ਟੂ ਆਪਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਬਲੂ ਸਟਾਰ ਯੈਟ देयर ਵਾਸ ਸਟਿਲ ਅ ਫੇਅਰ ਡਿਗਰੀ ਆਫ ਕੋਆਪਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਬਿਟਵੀਨ ਦੀ ਸੰਤ ਐਂਡ ਦੀ ਐਡਮਿਨਿਸਟ੍ਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਫਾਰਮਰ ਡੀਜੀਪੀ ਆਫ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਪੁਲਿਸ ਸਰਬਜੀਤ ਸਿੰਘ ਸੇਜ਼ ਦੈਟ ਦੀ ਸੈਂਟਰ ਵਾਸ ਇਨ ਟੱਚ ਵਿਦ ਦੀ ਸੰਤ ਥਰੂ ਐਮਿਸਰੀਜ਼ ਹੀ ਸਾਈਟਡ ਦੀ ਐਗਜ਼ੈਂਪਲ ਆਫ ਵਨ bharpur singh balbir who he says showed him a letter from mrs indira gandhi which was addressed to sant pindranwale the letter praised the sant and asked for his cooperation sarbjit singh says bharpur singh balbir delivered the prime minister's letter to the sant and confirmed it to me ek shakhs hai ke ne ne hai ke si main janta nahi bharpur singh balbir ਉਹ ਬਾਅਦ ਨੂੰ ਅੱਜ ਤੱਕ ਅਖਬਾਰ ਦੇ ਐਡੀਟਰ ਵੀ ਸੀਗੇ ਉਹ ਇੱਕ ਵਾਰੀ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਮੈਂ ਜਾਣਦੇ ਸੀਗੇ ਤੇ ਇੱਕ ਵਾਰੀ ਮੇਰੇ ਕੋਲ ਆਏ ਕਿ ਜੀ ਮੈਂ ਇੱਕ ਬੜੀ ਜ਼ਰੂਰੀ ਚਿੱਠੀ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਆਇਆ ਪ੍ਰਾਈਮ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਸੰਤਾਂ ਲਈ ਔਰ ਥੋੜਾ ਜਿਹਾ ਬੰਦਾ ਸ਼ੇਖੀ ਵਾਲਾ ਸੀਗਾ ਫੂਕ ਚਾ ਕੇ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਉਹਨੇ ਖੋਲ ਕੇ ਦਿਖਾਈ ਵੀ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਐਗਜ਼ੈਕਟ ਕੰਟੈਂਟ ਤਾਂ ਯਾਦ ਨਹੀਂ ਪਰ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਪ੍ਰਾਈਮ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰ ਦੇ ਲੈਟਰ ਪੈਡ ਤੇ ਪ੍ਰਾਈਮ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰ ਦੇ ਦਸਕਤ ਹੇਠ ਮੈਂ ਚਿੱਠੀ ਦੇਖੀ ਹੈ ਜਿਹਦੇ ਚ ਚੰਗੇ ਅਲਫਾਜ਼ ਵਰਤੇ ਗਏ ਸੀ ਸੰਤਾਂ ਬਾਰੇ ਇਹ ਜਾ ਕੇ ਮਿਲ ਕੇ ਸ਼ਾਮ ਨੂੰ ਵਾਪਸ ਮੇਰੇ ਕੋਲ ਆਇਆ ਦੱਸਣ ਲਈ ਕਿ ਹਾਂ ਮੈਂ ਕਰ ਆਇਆ ਜੇ ਪ੍ਰਾਈਮ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰ ਦੀ ਚਿੱਠੀ ਗਈ ਫਿਰ ਤਾਂ ਰਾਤ ਤੱਕ ਖੁੱਲੇ ਸੀਗਾ ਸਾਡੇ ਅਫਸਰ ਵੀ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਸੀਗੇ ਇਨਫੋਰਮੇਸ਼ਨ ਲੈਣ ਲਈ ਤੇ ਕੋਈ ਨਾ ਕੋਈ ਕੋਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਕੀਤੀ ਜਾ ਰਹੀ ਸੀਗੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਹੋ ਸਕਦਾ ਬਾਅਦ ਨੂੰ ਫੇਲ ਹੋ ਗਈ ਹੋਵੇ ਐਮਪੀਐਸ ਔਲਕ ਦੈਨ ਵਿਦ ਦੀ ਇੰਟੈਲੀਜੈਂਸ ਬਿਊਰੋ ਇਨ ਅੰਮ੍ਰਿਤਸਰ ਐਜ਼ ਐਨ ਅਸਿਸਟੈਂਟ ਡਾਇਰੈਕਟਰ ਡਿਸਕਲੋਜ਼ਡ ਹਾਊ ਦੀ ਟਾਕਸ ਵਿਦ ਦੀ ਅਕਾਲੀ ਲੀਡਰਸ ਕੰਟੀਨਿਊਡ till the end of may 1984 jo meri information hai ji jehde last round of talks si eh february ch shuru hoiya si te last meeting jehdi hoi si oh 26 mai 1984 nu hoi si delhi v
ਦੂਜੇ ਪਾਸਿਓ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਆਫ ਇੰਡੀਆ ਦੇ ਸੀਨੀਅਰ ਮਿਨਿਸਟਰਸ ਨੋ ਤਿੰਨ ਜਾਂ ਚਾਰ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਸੀ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਹੁਣ ਵਾਲੇ ਪ੍ਰਧਾਨ ਮੰਤਰੀ ਪ੍ਰੈਜ਼ੀਡੈਂਟ ਪ੍ਰਨਮ ਮੁਖਰਜੀ ਨਰਸਿਮਰ ਰੋ ਸ਼ਿਵ ਸ਼ਿਵ ਸ਼ੰਕਰ ਇਹ ਸਾਰੇ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਸੀ ਥਿਸ ਵਾਸ ਪੋਸੀਬਲੀ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ एवरीवन ਹੋਪਡ ਥੈਟ ਦੀ ਆਨਗੋਇੰਗ ਨੈਗੋਸ਼ੀਏਸ਼ਨਸ ਐਂਡ ਪਾਲਿਸ ਬਿਟਵੀਨ ਦੀ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਐਂਡ ਦੀ ਅਕਾਲੀ ਦਲ ਵੁੱਡ ਲੀਡ ਟੂ ਅ ਪੋਜ਼ਿਟਿਵ ਆਊਟਕਮ ਐਂਡ ਦੀ ਸਿਚੁਏਸ਼ਨ ਵੁੱਡ ਡੀ ਐਸਕਲੇਟ ਐਨ ਇੰਟਰਸਟਿੰਗ ਇਨਸੀਡੈਂਟ ਅਕਰਡ ਵੈਨ ਇਨ ਏਪ੍ਰਿਲ 1984 ਦੀ ਇੰਡੀਅਨ ਏਅਰ ਫੋਰਸ ਵਾਸ ਕੈਰਿੰਗ ਆਊਟ ਅ ਰੂਟੀਨ ਐਕਸਰਸਾਈਜ਼ ਇਨ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਨੀਅਰ ਦੀ ਬਾਰਡਰ ਵਿਦ ਪਾਕਿਸਤਾਨ ਅ ਰੇਡੀਓ ਸੈਟ ਵਾਸ ਸਨੈਚਡ ਅਵੇ ਐਟ ਗਨ ਪੁਆਇੰਟ ਬਾਈ ਸਮ ਆਰਮਡ ਪਰਸਨਸ ਫਰਮ ਟੂ ਅਨਾਰਮਡ ਏਅਰਮੈਨ ਇਨ ਅ ਵਿਲੇਜ ਨੀਅਰ ਤਰਨਤਾਰਨ when headquarters 15 div based in amritsar was informed about it lieutenant colonel adarsh sharma gso intelligence was told to try and retrieve it kal sharma made inquiries and managed to get the telephone number of rashpal singh pa to bandranwale and reached out to him on the telephone he reasoned out that since the radio set would be of no use to them it should be returned rashpal singh spoke to bandranwale who summoned Harminder Singh Sandhu and inquired about it. Sandhu said that one of their workers, Gurinder Singh Bhola, had snatched it. Sant wanted it returned. The radio set was dropped at the gate of 15 Dev headquarters. But this bonhomi was short-lived and by mid-May the situation was heading to a point of no return. During the last days of May 1984 an open confrontation built up between the government and the Akali Dal and the Akali Dal announced a morcha from 3rd June Though Akali Dal president Sant Harchan Singh Longowal and SGPC president Jaspitar Gurcharan Singh Tora had been operating from inside the Golden Temple complex their agitation had been taken over by Bindranwale for all intents and purposes On the eve of Operation Blue Star The Golden Temple complex had been turned into an armed citadel by different militant groups. There were mainly six armed groups which had dug their heels and taken guard for the battle. They were Babar Khalsa led by Sukhdev Singh who had reportedly killed the brother of an IAS officer Niranjan Singh Nirankari. Babar Khalsa activists were initially in the akal rest house but later shifted to guru nanak nivas which prompted bhindranwale to shift to the akal tak dal khalsa was the second group staying in the golden temple complex akhand kirtani jatha this group got divided into many parts one led by squadron leader ram singh remained free from violent activities one of the groups of which BB Amarjeet Kaur was a member supported Sant Longowal it also had the support of the Babbar Khalsa youth wing whose secretary general was Inderjeet Singh Baghi sided with Sant Longowal Akal Federation a 25 member group supported Bindranwale it functioned from room number 2 of Guru Nanak Nivas the most powerful group to emerge however was the one led by Bhindranwale with about 250 committed followers. The Sant himself was initially staying in room 49 of Guru Nanak Nivas but shifted to Akal Takht with his followers after a spat with Babar Khalsa activists. The Sant and his followers were the ones who had put up the main fight against the army during Operation Blue Star. Since the Golden Temple complex was out of bounds for the security forces armed militants moved around freely non six especially local shopkeepers who earlier formed a sizable number of daily devotees had been reduced to a trickle many six were also avoiding going in as they were viewed with suspicion by the militants who were fearful of security forces gaining entry to eliminate sant bindranwale about a week before operation blue star even people working for intelligence agencies masquerading as devotees were reluctant to risk their lives by going in a state of complete terror prevailed in the darbar sahib as no one wanted to place trust in the other lest 
he was betrayed and lost his life. Information gleaned from various sources, including eyewitnesses who lived within the Golden Temple complex, and also interrogation reports of some of the people who were arrested from the premises during Operation Blue Star have presented a picture of overpowering uncertainty, fear, and intrigue, yet bravado inside the abode of the gurus. The Punjab police and the security agencies had been monitoring the inflow of arms and ammunition into the Golden Temple complex. They, however, were often not able to prevent this inflow, either because of connivance of police officials or because of the car seva vehicles, which were being used to smuggle in the arms. Yet the security forces had a fairly good idea of the weapons inside the complex, based on inputs from the informers, many of whom were among the militants. During the last one week, information from within the complex had almost dried up. This was a time of hectic activity inside. The militants groups had started strengthening most of the morchas around and inside the complex, especially the Akal Takhat. The beefing up operation was being supervised by former Major General Shahbeg Singh, who was assisted by one Sujan Singh of Valtoha and Gyani Mohar Singh Granthi. The commander of Operation Blue Star, Lieutenant General Kuldeep Singh Barad, then a Major General, has written in his book Operation Blue Star, The True Story, that very scant information was forthcoming from local police and intelligence sources as regards the data necessary at this stage even to evolve an outline plan. The assessment of the number of weapons in the possession of the extremists was somewhere in the region of 200 to 250 of which we were told the majority consisted of 12 bore guns, 0.303 bolt action rifles, pistols and revolvers as well as a sprinkling of automatics, light machine guns and carbines. What was finally discovered after the operation was an altogether different story. Police gave us no information at all. They told us there, there are about uh, five to six hundred people inside, and there there may be about five hundred weapons of World War II vintage, some twelve bore guns, three or three rifles. The police had no information at all. Let me tell you, weeks in advance, the police had sort of washed their hands off this. They were mortally scared when DIG was killed inside the Golden Temple and thrown outside into the gutters. They realized that they better keep away from this. They knew weapons were coming in, in the... Um, uh, Car seva trucks. The trucks which are bringing in... Grain. Grain, etc. They knew all this was happening. They didn't stop it. They didn't um, take any action to stop it. They knew all these houses outside the Golden Temple had, had been taken over by militants. They didn't take any action to remove the militants from there. They just watched quietly. They didn't, they didn't do anything. They were ineffective, totally ineffective. I have assessed the police and intelligence files of that time, and I think the general neither had the time nor the opportunity to peruse what was available. And his claim in his book, as well as his interviews, including with me, is not borne out by facts. Sample this. The SPCID Punjab on 13th May 1984 sent a detailed report of the weapons inside the complex with different groups to the government. The report listed out the weapons with the Bindranwale group, which included LMGs 10, anti-aircraft guns, country made 4, telescope rifles 3 or 4, SLRs 25 or 30, carbines old type 100 to 125, Sten guns 150. 50 to 200, rifles 0 0.303, 315 bore, etc., 250, pistols and revolvers, including country made, 2000, grenades HE 36, 1500, grenades country made, 4000 to 5000, single barrel and double barrel guns, 300 to 400. Exact number of Ammunition is not known to source, but he says that it is a large quantity, the report said. The CID report further stated that the information regarding weapons with Bindranwale group is A-grade. 
The CID report mentioned another source and listed out the weapons with the Babar Khalsa group in the Golden Temple complex. Carbines 10, 0.315 bore rifles 5, 12 bore pistols 25, 0.32 bore pistols 5, double barrel guns 15, single barrel guns 10, 0.38 bore revolvers 4. Both these reports are in Punjab government files even today. This means that while the police and later the army may not have an idea of how the weapons were being arranged and used, they had an almost accurate account of the number and type of weapons present inside the complex. This underlines the fact that either the army decided not to ask for the police input or out of overconfidence decided to disbelieve it and ignore it altogether. General Brad's claim that the army did not have any information from the local police about the number and kind of weapons inside the complex is also disputed by a former DGP of Punjab police, Sarabjit Singh. Sarabjit Singh was the SSP of Amritsar until October 1983. He told me that he had provided maps marked with 48 entrances and had regularly shared information with the army about whatever was going on inside the complex. The local army formation, the local div, the intelligence officer, Colonel Adar Sharma. Colonel Adar Sharma was the one who was in the military, because he was in the ex-army, he was in the military, and 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 he was in the military. In the past few days, he was in the military, and 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 he was in the military. I made a copy and made a photo copy. When PWD was drafted, the draft was made, 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 the draft was made. I got the Blue Star for a month, in July, I got the Sharma. I got the railway police, so I got the Sharma. 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 वो कहने सानू ये भी नहीं पता जी भी रस्ते कड़े आगे ने ते कहने जी कल ये कि मैंने बुलाया गया ऐसी का और मैंने क्या गया ऐसी भी दस की इनफॉरमेशन देनी है ऐसी हरमंदर साहब के ऑपरेशन करना ते मैं कहा जी मैं अपने दफ्तर जा के इनफॉरमेशन ले के आना नहीं 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 होने ही दस दस मिनट चे तो कहने मेरा how such weapons and such large numbers could get inside the Golden Temple complex. On the basis of my access to secret official files, let me explain how this happened. There were at least half a dozen types of sources to such weapons. In one case, for example, the SPCID Punjab reported that on 30th April 1984, a car seva truck loaded with some food grains and bun reached Darbar Sahib complex Amritsar at about 6 p.m. near New Langar Guru Ramdas. The food grains and bun were unloaded. After that, two gunny bags containing four LMGs, three gunny bags containing 30 10 guns, one gunny bag containing 60 pistols, two gunny bags containing ammunition were unloaded. The said arms bearing marking made in China were got unloaded by Satinderjit Singh. They took all these eight bags containing arms to Shri Akal Takhat Sahib at about 9 p.m. All these arms were oiled and cleaned on the upper story of Shri Akal Takhat. One of the four sevadars who accompanied the car seva truck gave out that all arms and ammunition were arranged by some close associates of Sant Bhindranwale, who generally stayed in Gurdwara Buddha Jod in Shri Ganganagar district of Rajasthan. The Sevadar further gave out that they started from Shri Ganganagar early morning that day. En route, the truck was stopped by the police near village Gumjal, Muksar, Zira, and at Tarntaran, but the checking was in name only. At Muksar, 
they had to stop at a vehicle workshop for some time. But there too, none checked them, although the police was moving all around. The workers of Bindranwale Jatha were all jubilant when they were cleaning the weapons. Other sources of weapons included smuggling from the Pakistan border. A militant Anok Singh who surrendered after the operation told the interrogators that one Bakshi Singh of Havelia village in Chabal area of Amritsar was the key man who got orders directly from the Sant. During January, February 1984, he was asked to smuggle weapons in large quantity. Two truckloads were imported, which were driven into the complex in a car seva truck driven by son's personal driver, Kashmir Singh. Some weapons were also smuggled from Noshera Tala area of Amritsar. After Operation Blue Star, the security forces arrested a person, Sucha Singh, of Arejke village in the Malawala area of Ferozpur district, who disclosed that a truckload of arms had been smuggled from the Pakistan border through connivance of some BSF officials, and an ex-serviceman of the same village was involved. This consignment was personally collected by Surinder Singh Sodi, a confidant of Sant Janel Singh Bhindranwale, in a car seva truck near Khemkaran and taken to the Golden Temple. Interrogation reports of some arrested from within the complex reveal that some weapons were also contributed by followers of the Sant. Some were provided to the Sant by army and police deserters. Some weapons were manufactured locally. This process started about a year before Operation Blue Star when some local machines were brought in. Initial efforts to manufacture weapons did not succeed. One of the rooms used for this purpose was room number 34 in Guru Nanak Nivas, but in December 1983, the whole operation to make and maintain the weapons was shifted to the Akal Takhat, where one Sajjan Singh was in charge. Harminder Singh Sandhu, in his interrogation, stated that two Nihangs staying in Guru Ram Das Sarai used to sell country-made pistols for rupees 300 to rupees 400 apiece. Another militant admitted during interrogation that some weapons were locally assembled in a room near the Langar entrance of the complex. Lieutenant General Barad mentions in his book that on June 9 and 10, an arms factory located inside a room on top of the Diodi was also discovered at the Langar gate. Here, large quantities of locally manufactured grenades in various stages of mold, pistols, carbines, barrels, and breech blocks besides crackers and explosives were found. The arms and ammunition had been stockpiled at strategic locations inside the Parikrama and at vantage points in the adjoining buildings overlooking the Golden Temple complex to be able to put up a fight against an armed assault if the central government undertook it. Bhai Mokam Singh, a close associate of Sant Bhindranwale and a Damdami Tiksal ideologue, who was inside the Parikrama and witnessed the army operation, vividly describes all the assault stations of the militants in the Golden Temple complex and who was manning each one. ਦੋ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਬੁਰਜ ਸੀ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੋਨਾਂ ਬੁਰਜਾਂ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਇੱਕ ਤਾਂ ਮੋਰਚਾ ਬੰਦੀ ਸਿਰੇ ਤੇ ਸੀ ਇੱਕ ਵਿਚਾਲੇ ਜਿਹੀ ਇੱਕ ਉਦੋਂ ਥੱਲੇ ਸੀ ਤਿੰਨ ਥਾਵਾਂ ਤੇ ਤੇ ਇਹ ਬੁਰਜ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਸੀ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੀ ਮੋਰਚਾ ਬੰਦੀ ਸੀ ਤਿੰਨ ਕਿਸਮ ਦੀ ਇਸ ਤੋਂ ਇਲਾਵਾ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਬੁੰਗਾ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਉੱਪਰਲੇ ਛੱਤਾਂ ਸੀ ਉੱਥੇ ਬਾਬਾ ਕਾਰਸੇ ਵਾਲੇ ਬਾਬੇ ਖੜਕਸੋਰਾਂ ਦੇ ਡੇਰੇ ਸੀ ਕਮਰੇ ਸੀ ਕੋਈ ਬੰਦੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਚ ਵੀ ਬੈਠੇ ਹੋਏ ਸਨ ਇਸ ਤੋਂ ਥੱਲੇ ਭੋਰਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਦਰਵਾਜ਼ਾ ਥੱਲੇ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਉਹਦੇ ਥੱਲੇ ਭੋਰੇ ਦੇ ਨਾ ਚਾਰ ਪਾਸੇ ਤੋਂ ਚਾਨਣ ਵਾਸਤੇ ਟੇਡੀਆਂ ਜੇ ਰਾਹ ਥੱਲੇ ਨੂੰ ਬਣੇ ਹੋਏ ਸੀ ਕਣਕ ਦੀਆਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਿਨਾਂ ਜੇ ਗਰਾਈ ਆਉਂਦੀ ਸੀ ਕਣਕ ਬਹੁਤ ਪਈ ਸੀ ਲੰਗਰ ਵਿੱਚ ਵੀ ਹੋਰ ਵੀ ਉੱਥੇ ਵੀ ਬਾਬੇ ਖੜਕਸੋਰਾਂ ਦੀ ਵੀ ਸੀ ਗੁਰੂ ਰਾਮਦਾਸ ਲੰਗਰ ਦੀ ਵੀ ਸੀ ਉਹ ਬੋਰੀਆਂ ਲਾ ਕੇ ਧਾਂਕਾਂ ਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਉੱਤੇ ਬੈਠ ਕੇ ਤੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਉਹ ਟੇਡੇ ਜੇ ਉਹ ਚਾਨਣ ਅੰਦਰ ਸਿੱਟਣ ਵਾਲੇ ਸੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਬਰਾਬਰ ਆ ਕੇ ਸਿੰਘ ਬੈਠ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਸੀ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਮੋਰਚੇ ਦਾ ਰੂਪ ਕੰਮ ਕਰਦਾ ਸੀ ਇੱਕ ਉਹ ਵੀ ਥਾਂ ਸੀ ਦਲਬੀਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਨੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਵਧੀਆ ਢੰਗ ਨਾਲ ਬਿਉਂਤਬੰਦੀ ਉਸ ਥਾਂ ਦੀ ਕੀਤੀ ਹੋਈ ਸੀ ਮੈਂ ਉਸ ਜਗ
ਮਤਲਬ ਕਿ ਕੋਈ 5 ਤਰੀਕ ਦਾ ਕੋਈ ਕੁਸ ਮੁਸਾਜੇ ਦਾ ਟਾਈਮ ਸੀ ਮੈਂ ਉਦੋਂ ਤੱਕ ਉਹ ਜਗ੍ਹਾ ਤੇ ਰਿਹਾ ਉੱਥੇ ਅਕਾਲ ਤਖਤ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਤੋਂ ਇੱਕ ਸਿੰਘ ਆਏ ਦੋ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਸਿਨਿਆ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਕਿ ਕੁਝ ਆਦਮੀ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਨੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਅਕਾਲ ਤਖਤ ਸਾਹਿਬ ਵਾਲੇ ਪਾਸੇ ਉਹ ਫਲਾਣੀ ਜਗ੍ਹਾ ਤੇ ਭੇਜੋ ਉਹ ਲੰਗਰ ਵਾਲਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਵੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਕਿਹਾ ਕੁਝ ਲੰਗਰ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਜਾਣ ਕੁਝ ਇਧਰੋਂ ਜਾਣ ਇਧਰੋਂ ਭਾਈ ਦਲਵੀਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਨੇ ਦਿਆਲ ਸਿੰਘ ਰਾਗੀ ਸੁਖਵਿੰਦਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਲੱਡੂ ਲੱਡੂ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਸਾਂ ਹੋਰ ਇਦਾਂ ਦੇ ਕੋਈ ਸਿੰਘ ਸੀ 6-7 ਜਣੇ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਉਸ ਪਾਸੇ ਨੂੰ ਜਾਣ ਲਿਆ ਵੀ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਉਧਰ ਚਲ ਜਾਓ ਦੀ ਕੋਲਡਰੋਨ ਐਟ ਦੀ ਕੰਪਲੈਕਸ ਹੈਡ ਬੀਨ ਟੂ ਹੌਟ ਟੂ ਹੈਂਡਲ ਫਾਰ ਅ ਵਾਈਲ ਫਾਰ ਦੀ ਰੈਗੂਲਰ ਸਿਕਿਉਰਿਟੀ ਫੋਰਸਸ ਐਂਡ ਦੀ ਸੈਂਟਰ ਵਾਸ ਕੰਸਟੈਂਟਲੀ ਲੁਕਿੰਗ ਟੂਵਰਡਸ ਦੀ ਆਰਮੀ ਟੂ ਸਟੈਪ ਇਨ ਐਂਡ ਟੇਕ ਕੰਟਰੋਲ ਇਨ ਸਪਾਈਟ ਆਫ ਇਟਸ ਰਿਲੈਕਟੈਂਸ ਟੂ ਇੰਟਰਵੀਨ ਇਨ ਇੰਟਰਨਲ ਸਿਕਿਉਰਿਟੀ ਸਿਚੁਏਸ਼ਨਸ ਦੀ ਆਰਮੀ ਵਾਸ ਗੈਟਿੰਗ ਸਕਟ ਇਨਟੂ ਦੀ ਪੰਜਾਬ ਟਰਮੋਇਲ ਸਿੰਸ 1981 ਐਂਡ when its services were requisitioned for the arrest of sant bhindranwale from mehta chowk gurdwara in amritsar district some 35 kilometers away from the golden temple complex however the then western army commander lieutenant general sk sinha had prevailed upon the government to keep the army out of it the situation was that bhindranwale was in Mehta Chowk. He had met Zail Singh, the Home Minister in Delhi, coming from Bombay with 30-40 rifles with him. No one had done anything. And he went to Hisar. He was there for some time. Nothing was done there. Then he went to Mehta Chowk, Gurdwara. And I was rung up by the Chief Secretary of Punjab, I think, Puri was his name. Yes. He said, General, uh, Bhindran Bala has to be arrested. He is in the Gurudwara. And could you give us a few tanks? I said, it's a very strange request. The army doesn't give its weapons to the police. It uses its weapons itself. And when it is called it in aid of the police, we use our weapons. we don't sell our web and over our weapons like this and tanks policemen are not trained to use it so i don't know what you will do with it and if you if you have some ex servicemen from armored corps in the police they can use it the problem would arise what are the repercussions i have to take into account Firstly, use of tanks in a Gurdwara will have national and international repercussions, which would be very undesirable. Second, is that I have a large number of Sikh soldiers. It will hurt their sentiments, and we shouldn't do so. Then he says, well, we wanted it but if you can't do it we'll have to do something after that i get a message from darbar singh the chief minister wants to see me so i got my helicopter to break journey at chandigarh and i went to see him he said general saab my chief secretary has told me that you cannot give us tanks and you have very valid reasons for it and i agree with you but do win thing for us send the army arrest benanwala and clear up the place so i said sir the army has no powers of arrest the police can arrest the army cannot and i would advise you to use the police for that his benanwala has got 30 40 rifles so i said so have you the armed police the crp yes. used them and then he said in punjabi to see sanu madad nahi karte well i said i'm very sorry sir and our meeting ended two days later while i was still in rajasthan and i was out doing border reconnaissance in my helicopter my chief of staff general puri he was also a friend yes he got a message from delhi 
orders of the prime minister. The army has to go in and arrest Bindrawala. And um, as a good staff officer, he acted on it, thinking that I'll also do the same. And he passed the orders down the line to the core commander at Jalanda, and from him it went to the div commander at Amritsar. And a Gurkha battalion was detailed to go to Mehtachok. And I was informed at about 6 in the evening or 5.30 when I had landed. So my immediate reaction was, stop that, cancel that order. And he said, well, sir, but those are the prime minister's orders. I said, yes. So far as you are concerned, you have to carry out my orders. As regards the prime minister's orders, I'll deal with the problem myself. So I rang up Venkatraman. I thought, there's no point in my ringing up my chief. Although he's a friend of mine, Setna, we were colleagues, I rang up Venkatraman particularly after I had discussed at Bhatinda the Sikh problem with him. And I said, sir, these are the orders. And I've told my people not to take any action till I have my views presented to the Prime Minister. He was taken aback. He said, you're not going to carry out Prime Minister's orders. I said, no, sir, I will carry out the Prime Minister's orders. But my submission is that I am an army commander. I should be allowed to present my views before the Prime Minister before she gives a decision. And after hearing my views, she gives a decision, you should go, I'll yeah. go. Yeah. But today I have rang you up to say, this is the background. The Chief Secretary and Chief Minister, my interaction yes. with them. And if I were to carry out this order, Mehta Chowk Gurudwara is good 20-30 miles from Amritsar. Yes. And my troops have not seen the place by daylight, it's evening. And I have to complete the pass by tomorrow morning. There would be indiscriminate firing. A lot of people will get killed. And if I have to do it... You'll need time to prepare. I'll do it not tonight, tomorrow night. So that Troops can go see the place by daylight and then prepare. But I'll still advise that the army should not be used. He, Defence Minister, rather reluctantly told me, OK, I'll talk to the Prime Minister. A couple of hours later, I get a message. The army can stand down. The task will be carried out by the state government. I was happy. But after General Sinha was superseded, this kind of sensitivity diminished entirely. दुनिया में चाओ, साड़े नाल कदे भी ते कितों में जुड़ो आपा मिलांगे फेस्बुक ते असे दिखांगे यूट्यूब ते सानू फॉलो करो ट्विटर ते खबरा नाल जुड़े रहो दिन रात